The Chiefs uh, making other news. Carson Wentz, second overall pick in the 2016 draft, has a new home. After that, that, that shot of espresso he had with the Rams last year, doesn't have to wait all offseason long. Doesn't have to wait into the regular season. Doesn't have to wait into December, I think it was, when he finally gets a job. He's with the Chiefs. And you know what? I think this might be a middle finger to Woodrow Johnson if his first name is Woodrow and not Woody. I think it's Wood. I think his name's like Robert Wood Johnson IV. Anyway, you know, I think they may have wanted Zach Wilson. I haven't heard that, but they're one of the teams you look at their depth chart and say, who's backing up Patrick Mahomes? Well, now, at least for now, it's Carson Wentz. I, we had always thought that, Zach Wilson would be a good fit in Kansas City. Learn from Andy Reid. Learn from Patrick Mahomes. Turn your career around. Get the hard reset button. But the Jets want what they want. And they say, if we can't trade him, we're going to keep him. So the Chiefs possibly pivot to Carson Wentz instead. Either way, a guy who's got some skills now gets a chance to be rehabilitated almost a decade into his career by Andy Reid. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great spot for him. We know that, right? I mean, uh, and, and, and listen, I, I think you and I both thought, you know, Zach Wilson made sense there, but I don't know if I thought Zach Wilson made sense there as being the backup quarterback, right? I think he's a guy that truly needs to be, like, the third stringer. Like, he needs to, like, there can't be any chance he plays this year. He needs a year of, like, mechanics, coaching, let me learn an offense and not have to – you know, try to learn it on the fly or do anything like that. Carson Wentz, I think, protects the Kansas City Chiefs a little bit more too, right? I think if you're the Chiefs, you're going, wait, hey, we like Zach Wilson. We like his talent. We like all that, surely. But wait, if Mahomes got hurt in week five, do we really think he can, you know, run the offense and do things the way we want him to do and we're going to win games? I, I would go, eh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I love his talent, but we haven't seen that at a consistent level yet. Right, Wentz. I know it hasn't been perfect, but we've seen Wentz play, you know, extended periods of time of really good football. Right, he's got starting caliber traits. We know that too. Right, so I think it protects them a little bit more with a move like Carson Wentz, who has experience, played in playoff games. I mean, we've seen him play at a MVP ish type of level before that. The one thing we always talked about with Carson Wentz, right, was one thing that we kind of hear everywhere. The guy, the leader, not being able to kind of get in the locker room and be like one of the guys all that way. Well, if there's a spot where he and his agent could have picked to learn how to be that guy, damn, it's Kansas City because we know Mahomes is that guy. Mahomes is the master of, hey, like I'm one of the guys. I'm the quarterback. I'm the leader. I'm the boss. I'm the general. But yet I'm still one of the guys. Let's drink a beer. Let's go watch a game, blah, blah, blah. And I think Carson Wentz could really learn something from Patrick Mahomes in that department. You know, he's always had skills. Right. And you're right. 2017, his second season, he was on track to be the MVP, playing the Rams in L.A. in December, tore the ACL, opened the door for the very unlikely football equivalent of Slumdog Millionaire, where they just kept pulling one out of their butt yeah. week after week after week and ultimately won the Super Bowl with Nick Foles at quarterback. But then there was the whole, remember, he gets thrown out of Philadelphia and he lands with a family member. We did the whole Fresh Prince of Bel-Air thing with that. Like he gets kicked out of his parents' house and he goes and he and he moves in with his uncle, Uncle uh, Frank in, in, uh, in Indianapolis, where... You know, there's that connection back to the the Eagles in 2017. I know him. I need a starter. And hell, he started 17 games in 2021 with the Colts. But the thing is, he's got that propensity, apart from the locker room stuff, which goes all the way back to Philadelphia. Yeah. He does dumb things. He does. When he gets into these, when he gets Big into situations, these moments. situations, right? Yeah. Where, you know, and we see this from time to time where the player tries to do more than he's capable of doing. And I can relate to that from a much lower maximum natural skill set. You want to do something more than what you're capable of doing. And that's when you do something stupid, like throw a pick six with your left hand right. in your week own end zone. Remember or, that? Yeah, that was week 16, right? Was that? Yes, right. I, I do remember that. Or no, that wasn't that year. It was that the Chargers. It was, it was, it was, it was Chargers. The, yeah, I think it was the actually uh, it, they lost to the Raiders and the Jaguars late in the year. It was the Tennessee Titans, I believe, 
I want to say it was that okay, game. That's maybe right. I'm wrong because maybe I'm thinking of Matthew Stafford getting swung around in his own end zone and doing that too. I, I can't remember, but your your point is real. Yes, he had a propensity to do that type of stuff, right? Stuff that you'd go, wait, you've played too much, or you know, you you you're you're too good to to do that right there, like to just make that kind of like rookie type mistake. Uh, definitely popped up a little more than you would think for for a guy that played that much. Carson Wentz has started 93 regular season games in his career. He has a record of 47, 45, and 1. He has completed 62.7% of his passes, 22,292 yards, 153 touchdown passes, and 67 interceptions. We have this perception of the guy that would suggest 67 touchdown passes and 153 interceptions. He has been effective. I think it's the combination of dumb stuff in critical moments and not a great locker room guy. Right. That's what caused him to get And Nick to Foles coming in and chance. taking his job, right, and right. doing good. That, right. Yep. Go ahead, though. Sorry. He goes to Washington in 2022, which wasn't that long ago, grand scheme of things. And, you know, he was the guy, and then he gets banged up a little bit, and then it's Taylor Heineke. And and remember there was that time that, that Ron Rivera kind of stormed out of the press conference after the Thursday night game against the Bears because they were criticizing Carson Wentz. So, And then he just, like, falls off the map. That's what's so weird about it. Last year... Nobody wanted this guy, and it wasn't until December, literally, that he lands with the Rams, and now at least he gets a chance to be involved for the offseason program, He's training camp, compete, make the team, be the number two, get a chance to play at some point. And, you know, we saw Geno Smith do it, and Geno Smith had a far – thinner resume as a right. starter before right. he embarked on this journey back to being a starter again. But, you know, Carson Wentz still might have some good football left in him. He is, I'm looking for the age here, 31 years old, just turned 31 in late December. So as football quarterbacks go, yeah, he's got five, six, seven, eight years left. That, I, I would think so. I mean, he's got some high-level starting quarterback caliber traits. I mean, we talked about 2017 MVP type of, fo type of football. 2019, right, the year they went to the playoffs and, you know, he got hit with uh, Jadavian Clowney and the concussion in the wild card game, right? I mean, let's not forget, he carried the Eagles at the end of the season. Carried them. They had nothing on offense. It was just Carson Wentz making plays and doing all that. He has shown that ability. Mike, he is the guy that we talk about all the time, like what you talked about like to, to pertain to last year, right? Gosh, do we want to bring Carson in as the backup? He's kind of bigger and faster and has a stronger arm than our starter. Do we really want to do that? It might be, uh, gosh, I mean, we, our starter has a few bad weeks or whatever. Man, the team's going to see Carson. He's, he's, he's that guy a little bit. Where, yeah, it's not perfect that way. And then I think the locker room stuff and all the things we've heard like that are, are play into to the spot he's in. But, I mean, does, does Carson Wentz deserve to be on a roster and be a backup quarterback to that point? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I mean, you just said that. I mean, his resume, his stats, everything there, they certainly justify being a backup, right? I mean, they, they borderline deserves like you low end starting quarterback consideration, really, when you break it down. But yeah, he's got to still learn some nuances, how to rein it in. That's what happened to Washington. It's dumb interceptions. It's forcing the ball. It's, you know, like you said, wait, why? The play's over. Take the sack. What are we doing here? Right? Situational football. Here it is, the Titans play that I talked about. You know, there it is. I mean, that's right. That's rookie year, like, like third game of the year for a rookie who's a incredible athlete and you're just like well he's learning he's he's always gotten away with these things but to switch it to your left hand with nobody there that Boy. that's insane right that's insane i haven't seen a throw i haven't seen a throw like that with the left hand that bad and a guy wearing number two since you never mind um, <laughs> i knew you were going <laughs> there mind. i knew as soon as you said left hand i said oh i know where he's going with this <laughs> uh you know i'd rather have him than jimmy garoppolo 
There's I, better, I, I, more high I mean, end one, for sure. Yeah. One, one, one's, one's, a, one's a meathead who can play. One's a meathead who can't play. I'd ra- I, I'm, and I'm joking when I say that, and I say meathead in a lovable way. But I, I mean, if if we're referring to meatheads as a, a propensity to do dumb things at a bad time, they both have shown a propensity to do dumb things at a bad time. That's true. I'd rather have Carson Wentz because he will do better for me than Jimmy Garoppolo ever will. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I don't disagree there. His high end, his top end game is is better than Garoppolo. But again, again, you know, Garoppolo's he for the most part has been around good team situation. He doesn't. He's got some bonehead interceptions, but not quite like that, right? To where you know that kind of stuff there scares. That scares people, coaches, when they see that. They're like, "Whoa, I don't know what to trust." You know, can I trust him? What is he gonna do, right? And then I think there's an you know, unlike a Garoppolo, who again has his bad interceptions that you alluded to. You're like, "What?" His are more a little traditional too at times. You know, Wentz at times can also be like, "Really?" I mean, you thought you were gonna fit that ball in there? There's three defenders there. There's just a little too much of that. That the offensive guru type, the careless, crazy left-handed throw, it'll scare them. But the tie-in talent is real, like you're saying, and I, I think it's a smart signing by the Kansas City Chiefs, and it's a good job by Carson Wentz and his representation, you know, getting him to a spot that makes sense for him and and maybe can do him some good following a guy like Mahomes and let him let him learn that aspect of quarterbacking that's very important that people don't realize sometimes. And also learn from Andy Reid. And, you know, what you're talking about is the flip side to the thing that Peter King – would say about Bill Walsh, if you see a guy do something great, if I see him do it once, yeah. I can get him to do it all the right. time. I think this is, if I see that once, I never know when that's going to happen, and I can't have There you that. go, right. That, that un, like, I never know when that's going to rear its ugly right. head. That was Carson and Wentz in year six of his career, and he's team. doing that. Right, yeah. exactly. I exactly. can't have a guy on my team that, that, that is capable of doing that. Yeah. That 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 scares that scares offensive coaches. Coaches want to trust their quarterback, and they know what he's going to do in certain situations. And I think he's broken that trust a few times, you know, throughout his career. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.